Good morning, praise the Lord. Today, 24th July, we'll talk about Job. The book of Job is the oldest book in the Holy Scriptures and it presents one of the world's oldest problems. What is the oldest problem? Why do the righteous suffer? Job is portrayed as a wealthy man of upright character who loves God. It's written about him in Job 1.1. 1, 1. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned the evil. Job's life was filled with prestige, positions and people and he was suddenly assaulted on every side, devastated, stripped down to his foundations. He lost his positions, his children and his health also. Job did not understand why he was suffering. Why does God allow his children to suffer? Although there is an explanation, we may not know it while we are here on this earth. In the meantime, we must always be ready to be tested since by testing only we will be going to a higher spiritual level. The mystery of the suffering of righteous, a righteous Job uh, reminds us of the one greater than Job who suffered the righteous for the unrighteous, unrighteous people. First uh, P Peter 3.18 says this, The righteous Jesus died for the unrighteous people. The book of Job is a magnificent piece of dramatic literature, yet Job was a real person, historical person. The writing is largely in the form of poetry and teaches us that suffering is not always retributive, but may be disciplinary and educative. The Lord has an end product in view. It has been suggested that the book of Job is a key to the whole Bible. Satan's defeat, the, friend, uh, the friend's uh, rebuke and Job's reward. We see pictures of man unfallen yet tried, then his sin and suffering. We see human help not forthcoming and there is a need of revelation from God. His uh, friends tried his, their best but uh, they couldn't. So God had to interfere. Subsequently, there comes humility, repentance and faith along with restoration to a better state than at first. We would expect Job's wealth and family to give him a very happy life and for a little while they did. But the loss and pain he experienced shocks us. The first two chapters of his story are more than we can bear. To those so quick to ask why, at the smallest misfortune, Job's faithfulness seems incredible. But even Job had something to learn. We can learn along with him. Our age of instant everything, instant coffee, instant tongue, that's, that thing, this thing, instant food, instant everything has caused us to lose the ability to wait. We expect to learn patience instantly and in our hurry we miss the contradiction. We want an instant cure for everything from toothache to heartbreaks. Job was not expecting instant answers for the intense emotional and physical pain he endured. But in the end, what broke Job's patience was not the suffering, but not knowing why he suffered. When Job expressed his first frustration to his friends, they were ready with answers. They all believed that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. So uh, they felt their role was to help Job admit to whatever sin was causing his suffering. Look at this. When God finally spoke, he didn't offer jo Job an answer. Instead, he drove home the point that it is better to know God than to know answers. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for teaching us about Job and his sufferings. Yes, Lord, we should never ask why. That is the lesson that we learned today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I ask. Amen. God bless you.